Hey world, you're listening to Globe Thotter, the pod that puts the lover in travel lover. I'm your fearless and flirty host, Cassie Martinez. A solo traveler and digital nomad for over seven years and counting, I've mixed business with pleasure ever since my first solo trip in 2016, when I ditched my flight home after falling in love in and with Lisbon. Join me each episode as I swap juicy travel stories with a slew of amazing adventurers who, like me, kiss and tell. Dating, backpacking, main character moments. We're going there. And you're coming with me. Hello, hello, Globe Thotties. How we doing? Globe Thotter Pod is back with another full length episode. And this time, I'm talking with Casey de la Pena, who you may know as Casey Meets World, a digital nomad and content creator who has been traveling the world on a budget for over 10 years now. Casey's bookmark worthy content on TikTok and Reels is all about helping you travel the world for less. Coming at us all the way from Lake Atitlan in Guatemala, Casey really is living that dream nomad life. Cute foreign boyfriend included. From remote work to the green flags that can take a travel fling to the next level, along with Casey's tips for creating a more healthy relationship with your body image, this episode covers it all. And I cannot wait for you guys to hear this Casey and Cassie crossover. So without further ado, Buckle up and lift those tray tables, because Globe Thotter is taking off. Hey, Casey, how you doing? Oh, I am so good. I am so excited to be here because this is a podcast I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Yes, that Cassie Casey duo is here. It's been a minute in the works. I'm so happy to. Wait, is your real name Cassandra or no? Oh, yeah. When I'm abroad, I am Cassandra, baby. Like, particularly, particularly in Latin Central America, like, I realize it the first few days of a trip, I'll be like, yeah, hi, I'm Cassie. And then I'm like, no, that's just, it's not hitting. There's something, no, 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 something's off. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's Cassandra. That's it. (laughs) My boyfriend really likes that. Yeah, the Cassandra. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder, how has that come up? And what? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we'll get into that later. (laughs) Yeah, okay, I love it. Well, you know what? Just on the subject of names, is Casey your full name too, or do you go by anything else? It's Cassandra Renee. Like, Renee's my middle name. Ah. Only if I'm in trouble by my mom, you know? So I only go by Casey. Oh my God, Cassandra Renee. I'm Cassandra Yvonne. Ooh. Yeah, so interesting vibes, interesting vibes. It's middle name, like, passed down the generations. Like, my mom has it. So does mine. Uh, My dog has it. No, I'm just joking. No. (laughs) My dog has it. My mom's middle name is also Renee. She was like, oh, we're just going to name her Cassandra Renee, and she's Christine Renee. Okay. Okay. What is your heritage? I'm Italian. Your Italian Mexican cousins. Look at us. Cousins. (laughs) That is one of the hardest things about living in a Latin area is that everyone assumes that I speak Spanish fluently and I'm working on it, but I am struggling right now. Like people speak fluently Spanish all the time and I'm like, I'm sorry, no entiendo. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. You know what? Italians are invited to the cookout when it comes to us Mexican folks. You are one of us. Thank you so much. And I honestly also completely empathize with the struggling to learn Spanish. Like I am like Mexican and American and I still struggle. Like once we get to like intermediate advanced Mm -hmm. in the courses, I was literally thinking about it today. I do this telltale thing. It's every time I just start zoning off. Like, meh. Like, my brain on an unconscious level is like, ah, whatever. Like, I need to focus. Like, this is important. Yeah, I just <laughs> had that conversation with my boyfriend's sister um, two days ago. She was like, oh, can you understand anything that we're saying when they were having a conversation? And I was like, oh. my brain just shuts off. Like, unless I'm actively paying attention, if the conversation's not pertaining to me or I'm not being directly spoken at, I just kind of like, shut off. And I'm like, oh, that's so bad for me because I need to be listening to these conversations to advance my Spanish. But the shut off, it just, yeah. Yeah. And I don't even realize I'm doing it. Yeah. The classic disassociating trauma response. (laughs) (laughs) It's traumatizing learning a new language out here. (laughs) Truly, truly. So on that note, where are you joining us from today? So I'm joining from Guatemala, like Atitlan to be specific. Mm. Um, I've been living here a little over a year now. Amazing. It's truly like 
it is on my vision board for the winter coming up. Like I know, mm. I know I'm going to be there. And so you and a couple other guests I've been interviewing are all talking about Guatemala. I'm like, that's when you know the travel gods are talking to you. <laughs> you got to come, right? There's trends. Yeah. Like in travel. Oh my God. It's like Hansel, like Guatemala is so hot right now. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So many people, like I've met so many people coming through in the last year too, wow. since I moved here. Like People are like, oh, I'm coming to Guatemala, let's meet up. And mm. I've met so many of my internet friends traveling through. Oh, love that, love that. And where are you from originally? So born and raised in Ohio, um, moved to Florida for maybe four or five years. That's kind of where I mm. call home when people ask, because mm. I don't really like Ohio that much. Fair. <laughs> so I'm more like a Florida girl, yeah. Okay, she more resonates with Florida, love that. Florida woman in the yeah. news, like Florida man. <laughs> Like Florida man, <laughs> just not quite as crazy. Right. Crazy, but not quite as crazy. Hey, hey. You know, I feel like, well, I'm in Texas, born and raised here, and Florida and Texas have similar big state, just chaotic energy, so I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to kick things off, mind telling folks listening a bit about your content in your own words? Yes. So my content, I'm Casey Meets World, and I am your self-proclaimed budget travel bestie because I started traveling about 10 years ago now. Mm. And I was like, okay, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. That's what everyone from my small town in Ohio told me. And I studied abroad for six weeks. And I was like, why does this have to be a once in a lifetime opportunity? Mm. Why can't I do this more? And then I started looking into backpacking and, and getting into all of that. And I realized, okay, well, if I had that mindset, how many other people out there had that mindset of, these are once in a lifetime trips or mm. things that look cool, but you never may get to do. Right. And so I wanted to start sharing my content on Instagram. And then once TikTok kind of entered the scene, mm. I got more into TikTok actually than Instagram. So oh yeah, TikTok's kind of like my, where my passions lie. <laughs> I love that. And I love how you call to attention this mindset that we have, particularly in the States where it is this once in a lifetime you better soak it all up, like mostly coming along with something like study abroad and how many people percentage-wise even get to do study abroad. It is something that is an extremely privileged thing to do when you're like hustling and trying to graduate. Like it's tough. And so I really yeah. like this democratization of travel and it's for everybody. And it's that abundance mindset too of like, and it's not just this once, okay? You get to go again. Yeah, you can, can go again if you want to. Exactly. And it's so funny because when I was thinking about going into college, like I didn't know what I wanted to study. I didn't know like a major, mm. like I, I had no idea about any of that. The only thing that I said that I wanted to do was study abroad. Hey. Like, yeah, that was my first thing that I said I wanted to do when I was in high school. I was like, I want to study abroad. Yes. Where did you go? I went to Nantes, France for six weeks. It's on the Ooh, West Coast, okay. like on the Atlantic. Nice. Was it a specific program or? It was through my school. It was just through the, they have a business school there. Mm. So my business school did an exchange with their business school for a summer program. It worked out better that way than doing like a semester. Okay. Because I ended up doing the Disney College program as well in Florida. Oh, so. wow. Oh, yeah, that's so interesting, yeah. too. I, I definitely Googled that. And I was like, I don't know. Wait, how does this work? Like, I think every college kid was like, <laughs> I get to live at Disney. Like, but you actually did it. Wow. Yeah, it's basically just like labor, like free labor for them or like cheap labor for them. <laughs> Honestly, in hindsight. <laughs> Had a great experience, but. In yeah. hindsight, so many <laughs> things reveal themselves to be that way. You're like, oh, what an opportunity. And then you're like, wait. Womp womp. <laughs> I'm serving chicken nuggets to children uh, screaming their heads off. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. It was the chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the hot dogs and the Mickey pretzels and all, all the above. Oh my gosh. So you briefly talked about when TikTok entered the scene, but tell us about your journey to becoming a content creator. Like when did you first realize you're like, I think I should be sharing this. Uh, I think I was kind of active on Instagram all, kind of always, like I was always a little bit more active than most people, I would say, mm. that I knew. And then in 2018, when I started backpacking for the very first time, like I took my first backpack trip. I went to London. I went to some cities in France. And then I ended mm. up in Italy on a work exchange. And that's when I started sharing it a little bit more seriously. And then I would kind of it was like back and forth. I was like, do I do this? I was like kind of dabbling, you know? Oh, yeah. But it wasn't until 2020 when TikTok 
came onto the scene that I was like, okay, wait, I now I know I want to be a creator. Mm. I know I have valuable information because Instagram was so hard to grow. And I was like, I'm sharing these, this information to like maybe a thousand people. But TikTok, I was able to grow a following just by being consistent. True. And I was reaching a, such a larger audience that I was like, okay, I can actually make a difference and reach people. Ooh, yeah. It really is about those feedback loops and on these platforms and being like, am I being heard? Am I making like a footprint here? Because the level of your quality of content on the Instagram that maybe didn't have that biggest reach, like it was probably still just as great. But Instagram doesn't have your back in the way that TikTok was like, I got you. TikTok. TikTok is basically like open mic night. Like literally anybody can step up to the mic and the algorithm, like the AI is like, okay, cool. I know you don't have literally any followers right now, but this is good. And I'm going to share it with a bunch of people. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like the I had less than 10,000 followers the first time I had a uh, over 1 million view video. Mm. And it was like a moment of oh my gosh, mm. people like my content, they're getting value out of what I'm saying yeah. on here, I need to be sharing this with more people. And mm. I've created an amazing community of other yeah. like minded solo female travelers and budget travelers, content creators that are also travelers, you know, And those are important people to have in your circle when you're trying to make this your lifestyle. That's true. And I will say too, like the number one thing that I look for in TikToks is like bookmarks, right? Like there's all sorts of like metrics, like likes and who, you know, shared this with friends or whatever, but who's saving this video? Who's saving it for later? Right. Like, you know, the funniest comments is like, dude, I don't even have it in my plans to go to Guatemala anytime in the future. For me, it's like, I don't even think I'm going to Paris to go clubbing in the future, but I'm saving this just in case. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Just in case. Amazing. So aside from content creation, you're also a remote worker. What are some of the different gigs you've taken on to fund your travels? So I was the typical like teach English to make money mm-hmm. at first. And I realized that that was pretty much just kind of like some pocket money. It wasn't mm-hmm. really anything to get me, you know, like savings or I was I was definitely losing money. And then I I keep talking about TikTok, but I really genuinely believe it changed my life because Mm -hmm. it gave me brand collaboration opportunities and UGC work and all these things. And that's how I started pretty much making money. And then I started freelancing and doing it for other people. So So true. Yeah. So like people like small businesses or other influencers who are like, hey, I don't really know TikTok. You seem to have it down. I'll pay you to help me with that. Mm -hmm. And so I've had really great luck with bringing on clients that way through social media management. Ooh, yes. I honestly feel like solo travel and social media management, I'm making a handshake gesture for those that are listening, can't see. Those go hand in hand. They give you so much autonomy. And like you said, there are so many people out there, maybe they're just in a different generation or they don't want to handle it. And they're like, you got this. Like literally, if you are Gen Z or like millennial, like you are so ahead of the game so much more than you know when it comes to social media. Yeah. And I, it was all self-taught. Like I taught myself how to create videos and get better at it and do voiceovers and editing and all of that, you know, like I have a business degree, so I do have some marketing experience, Mm -hmm. but most of it was pretty much just me getting on TikTok and making a fool of myself until I figured it out. Oh, yes. The making a fool of yourself is the critical part of the process. And I think that is what keeps so many of us back out of it. It's like, no, like you have to Mm. embrace the cringe. The cringe can make you a lot of money. Yeah, it's making me money now and I'm fine with it. Hey, I literally though, you know, a lot of the, oh my God, I'm cringe right now is like the inner talk. I literally though had someone message me though that I had met traveling and was like, basically said, cringe. And I was like, oh my God, like you're literally the voice that I made up in my head that was like keeping me small before. And I I didn't think it was actually real, but like, here you are. And it was just literally like such a hater dude who, in my opinion, my story about this person is that they were really funny. They were really funny, like talk show potential host funny. But were they chasing that? No, they weren't. So they were a hater. They were a hater, Casey. Yeah, because you're (laughs) out here living your best life, you know, like. Once I started doing what I wanted to do and I was making money the way that I wanted to, traveling when I wanted to, Mm. I stopped listening to people because I was like, you know what? You're sitting at your house miserable, Mm. wishing that you had the life that I did. Yeah. I mean, that's like one of the critical pieces about advice that they share a lot these days is would you take advice from someone whose shoes you wouldn't want to be in? Straight up. Yeah. That's real. That is so real. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my god! Yeah, no, screw that guy. No, come on. No, truly, I pretty quickly after that did the like remove follower and stop following because I'm I'm not the type that's like I'm just gonna unfollow you and you're gonna follow me forever. No, no, no. I'm ethical. Okay, <laughs> I will make the relationship both unfollow. How's that? <laughs> and of course, it was a guy, right? You know? Oh my god! <laughs> no, dude. Do you ever also get these like backhanded weird comments? Like from people who know you from like the past and maybe knew pre TikTok, Casey. I think I got a lot of unfollows. I think my the people <sighs> from my hometown are a little just more quieter about it. Mm. So it's more just like they unfollow me. So now pretty much all of my followers on Instagram and TikTok are people who are newer in my life, like oh. post college even. Yeah. Or the ones that have been like from college or maybe high school are actually have been a little bit like more supportive. I definitely do agree that there is like a before and an after and it, it makes sense. And it's like, if people want to like exit all the more power to them, Bye. like you get again, back in that abundance mindset, 7 billion people on this planet. Mm. Like there's so much yeah. more than just like the 500 people that were following me before I started making content. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yep. And they started dropping like flies once I started consistently posting. And I was like, that's fine. I mean, I'm a totally different person than who I was in college. So right. Fair enough. <laughs> so you're currently living full time in Guatemala. Tell us about the journey that got you there. So this is where things get interesting, right? <laughs> so in October of 2021, I was in Europe and I got a message from World Packers saying mm -hmm. that they would love to work with me. I said, okay, but I'm busy until like February of next year. We might have to put this on hold. They were like, that's fine. So February of 2022, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to do this. Where should I go? They're like, oh, we don't really care. Just pick a place. And where in the world is Nina, another blogger, vlogger, uh, social media, travel content creator, I had just went to Guatemala. I, so I Googled flights to Guatemala and I'm like, oh, they're pretty cheap within the budget that mm -hmm. World Packers, their budget that they had for me. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll go to Guatemala. So I went to Shela, which is a city in the north. I was supposed to spend two weeks there and my host was so busy. I was teaching her English and she was like, if you want to cut this short, like, that's totally fine. And I was like, yeah, like, I really want to go to this place called like Atitlan. I've been hearing so much about it. I feel this calling. Like I, yeah. I need to go see what it's all about. And I was kind of didn't love Shayla. Like it was just kind of a city to me that mm. I didn't vibe with. And I was like, but I know that I'm going to love the lake and I want to go to the lake. So yeah. I get to the lake. I go to Panahashel, which is the main city um, on the lake. It's the biggest one. And I got to my hostel. I stayed at the Selena in Panahashel. And three days in... One of my friends was like, oh, this bartender is really cute. And I was like, you know what? He is cute. <laughs> so in my horrible Spanish, I'm like, oh, tu tienes una novia? Like, do you have Stop. a girlfriend? <laughs> was this before Hola? <laughs> he, so I don't actually remember like our first couple of encounters, but he ah. told me that like, I tried to talk to him in Spanish a couple of times about like my filling up my water bottle or like something like that, like yeah. at the bar. But I, I had seen him, but like I didn't pay any attention to him. But it was literally like my friend goes, hey, this bartender's cute. And I immediately look up and I'm like, do you have a girlfriend? Ooh, you know what? <laughs> like, Get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. That's what I'm saying. We should all applaud this, especially I'm telling you, Latin Central America, you got to know, did they have a girlfriend? That is an important question. You have to clarify that in the beginning. Honestly. Okay. Yes. Laws of detachment and attachment, just straight up first. Can this crush go further? Unfortunately, like, it's not our responsibility to have someone stay faithful in a relationship or, like, whatever. But it is our responsibility to, like, ask that question because facts. I just don't want to be put into a situation that I don't want to be. Yeah. I never just want to be in a situation, period. <laughs> yes. Just no situations. <laughs> So he goes, no, you know, and I'm like, oh, again, I don't know Spanish well enough. So I do know one phrase that my friend a while back had taught me. And I was like, quiere ser mi novio? Oh, <laughs> do you want to be my stop. boyfriend? <laughs> I'm shook. <laughs> and he looks up at me and he does like a little shrug and he goes, sure. I was like, great. We're all going dancing. I'll see you in 30 minutes. Ah! <laughs> That's kind of where it started. And so I was only supposed to be at the lake for maybe like two weeks, mm. which quickly turned into three months. And then okay, okay. after a short trip over to Europe for the summer, 
I came back and ended up moving here and he is my boyfriend. So Okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna need some details first. Firstly, the question <laughs> that comes up for me is I think we all need to know what your sign is. <laughs> Sagittarius. Oh, okay. You are the travel sign. That's the sign that like yeah. all the travelers say. You know, it's like lovers yes. of many things in life, including travel, but also love. <laughs> <laughs> lovers of love. I mean, that describes me. I'm not like super huge into astrology, but my friend did tell me like I have a lot of fire signs and I do know I'm Sagittarius. I support anyone who believes in it. That's totally fine. I just like don't know that much about it myself. Mm -hmm. But anytime I've ever told anyone like what I am or anyone who's ever done like a reading for me or anything, they're like, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, Well, that story is like literally so bold. And I think we can all take some lessons from it. Firstly, again, like just getting clear on intention, like... Do you have a partner? Okay, check. Honestly, how many times do we like allow ourselves to go down the slide of crushism and you don't even yeah. know if they're single? Yeah, of course, right? And I I my it was such an impulse decision for me to say that to him, but I was like, you know what? Like what's this 30 seconds of embarrassment or maybe like an hour of embarrassment later like if he says no, I'm not interested, or yes, he does have a girlfriend versus, Mm. you know, now I have this partner of a year and all these amazing memories and a whole new life because I just did something bold for five seconds. Yes, so much to be taken from that. And you know what? I was listening to this podcast called Do You Fucking Mind? Maybe you've heard of it. It's from an Australian podcaster. And the episode I'm thinking of particularly is when she talks about like what self-confidence is. And, you know, what we Mm -hmm. should ask ourselves before making a big, bold decision. And the thing that she said, kind of like the roadmap was ask yourself, if I do this thing, like if I ask this question, if I ask if they're single, if I ask her want to go dancing with me, whatever. And the answer is no. Will I spiral? Will it crush me? And then if the answer is will I spiral? Yes. Then don't do it. But like it sounds 100% like you were like, dude, I'm here for two more weeks. I'm fucking good. This is like just yeah. light and fun. Like you had the right energy about it because oof, when you spiral, like you're just setting yourself up. Like there's no need, you know? Absolutely. Travel has taught me a lot about confidence because I just, I don't care. Like, I don't care if you don't like what I look like. I don't care if you mm-hmm. think I'm too much in a room or I don't care if you don't want to date me. Okay, great. I'm going to be in another country in a week anyway. So see you next time, like, or never. (laughs) Right. Yeah, totally. Okay. I fuck with me. You don't have to fuck with me energy. Yes, exactly. I love it. So when did you know it was a serious versus like just a like fun fling? Okay. So I've had flings in the past, like travel flings Mm -hmm. and I was on the apps. I was doing all of that. And This was the first person that I had met organically where Mm. I just, he was my bartender and I just started talking to him. And the first night or two, I was very adamant, like, listen, I was kind of like, oh, like, maybe this is just for fun. But like, also I was like, okay, I'm not trying to like hook up right away. Like I want to kind of make you work for it a little bit, right? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So he was really respectful about me asking that Mm. or, you know, me stating my boundaries like after our first night, um, we had made out a little bit, but nothing else, just strictly that. I was like, okay, wait, actually, maybe I do kind of like this guy. Let me see. I have time. I don't have to be anywhere until May. It's only February. And so the two weeks had went by and I was going to another city on the lake to stay for a week. And for that entire week, it's an hour boat ride, by the way. Like the only way to really get over there is to take this hour long boat ride. Mm. And so I'm thinking like, okay, like this is going to kind of going to be the test. Like mm. we've hung out for two weeks straight. We've had a good time, but now I'm going an hour away. Is he going to text me? Is he, you know, yeah. what, what's going to be the deal with this man? He came to visit me and we saw each other four out of the seven days that I was gone. Oh my god! Like, He would get up before work or after work and take the boat all the way over to the other city to see me or stay the night with me in my Airbnb and then come back and go back to work. Um, And he works six days a week. So cute. Yeah. yeah, That's when I was like, okay, I think you might be worth my time. Let me me come back. Let me check this out. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's so much to kind of grab from that. There's so many green flags there. And I think as well, kind of like, you know, edging out the cookies little by little, like, and just seeing (laughs) if someone shows up for you, you know, and see how they show up for you. Exactly. 
You know, there's another podcast I listen to. I've been doing a lot of jogs with my dog, and I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. <laughs> a lot of podcasts. <laughs> I highly, highly recommend this podcast. It's called Love Line by Matthew Hussey. It's a dating pod. And you know what? Is he British? He's British. He's British. <laughs> yeah, I think I know who you're talking yeah. about. I don't think I've heard his podcast, but I've seen him on highly TikTok Highly recommend. And stuff. Yeah, he's been in the game as like a love coach and all that stuff for like a really long time. Yes. And I like his just like male perspective too. I think so often we can as women be like, oh, it's just so mysterious, you know, and he's just straight up. While respecting my soft, soft feelings, um, anyway, <laughs> what he was talking about in one of his pods was about just kind of like doling out trust in somebody over time. It's like you don't start with 100% trust or availability to somebody. Like you give it out as they show up for you through action, not through words, mm -hmm. because I think especially as solo female travelers, it is good to have your guard up. How often do we talk about give your location to a friend and don't tell anybody you're solo traveling, all these things? Well, how do we replicate that with dating? Like, because we still have to protect not only ourselves, but our hearts. And that so often is through like waiting for the green flags to show up. Yeah, I have a best friend, shout out to Maria, um, Hi, Maria. <laughs> when she listens to this, <laughs> who I every single time before, before I had my boyfriend, any single time I would go on a Bumble, Tinder date, whatever, mm. Hinge, you name it, it was, hey, I'm going on this date tonight. Like, mm. if you don't hear from me in three hours, you know, or here's where I'm going or, you know, whatever it is. So yeah. I give her like a heads up because the only other person I trust enough for that is my mom. And sometimes I'm not trying to tell my mom, like, hey, I'm about to go meet this like French man, like up yeah. in the middle of this mountain. Oh like, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Truly, truly. It is about those like BFFs, those ride or dies that you can just tell the T to and be like, hey, don't judge, but just can you help me stay safe? This is what's happening. Yeah, yeah. that is that's a love language. Here's my location. Yeah, that is a love language <laughs> for sure. So while we're on the subject of green flags, can we talk real quick about travel relationship red flags? Like what are some that you have picked up over the years of solo traveling? First off, if they're British or Australian, absolute no. Oop, oop, <laughs> she said it. She went for the jugular. <laughs> no, I mean, kidding, but not kidding, I guess. Oh yeah, 100% like serious. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird because I started traveling when I was in my early 20s and now I'm in my late 20s mm. and seeing the difference of, you know, you feel like you're getting older, but everyone else kind of seems like they're staying the oh. same age because you're in the hostels and you're running into those like little 20, 21 year olds yes. who are just here for their gap year to have fun. And, you know, and I, I realize kind of reflecting back on what makes my boyfriend now different than what made my other travel flings that didn't work out. One, like how we met and how intense they were like when we first met. So dating apps are pretty much how I've met most of my flings or in my mm. hostels. And it was immediately like they're trying to sleep with me. They're trying right. to like, go home on the first night. Like I've had people ask me like hook up in the hostel. I'm like, there's eight other people in mm. here. Like, where are we doing this? Absolutely <laughs> not. You know, <laughs> like if you want me that badly, you can go ahead and get a private room for us. Yeah, um, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like spring for that private room. I don't know. Just I think the traveling culture is very temporary. Mm. So it's very hard. And what made this nice was that he really respected my boundaries right away. So yes. I was like, hey, listen, Beautiful. we're not doing anything, you know. And so red flags, definitely like how quickly are they trying to like, you know, do they want to take you home that night? Do they want to are they again trying to get you into your hostel dorm or asking Ooh. you to do stuff that you like don't really feel that comfortable with? Yes, and, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Listening to that inner voice. And I think, too, like you're saying, what is the speed at which this person is trying to move? And yes, it can come off as sincere and like we're all trying to live in the moment. But what's coming forth for me listening to this story is we have to exercise meeting in the middle between bold and boundaries. Like when you first said mm -hmm. hello to this guy, you were bold as hell. And I applaud that. But it was followed by, you know, that night exercising your boundaries. Exactly. Yeah. You know, because I think... It's often, oh, like, if you're bold, like, you, you're you sending mixed messages if you want to wait and this and that. And it's like, no, honey, I can be a dynamic woman. Exactly. Like, yeah, I can be bold and ask you out first, which aren't most men out there, like, asking us to do that anyways. Mm -hmm. And I can do that. But you're going to also have to respect that I know who I am. I know what boundaries I have. I know how secure I am in myself. So if you aren't going to step up to the plate, respect what I'm I'm asking, then... 
Okay, never mind. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> love it love yeah it, love like it. the guy i met in poland last year he or no not last year i'm sorry two years ago now so i met him on bumble and we go on like a couple of great dates but immediately like he's trying to hook up i'm like mm. okay like you know but i was like oh my gosh like this man is telling me all the right things he mm-hmm. wants to travel the world with somebody and right. he's you know remote worker and he's all of these things that i want and he seems to be putting in the effort, like he's buying me all of my drinks and and mm. whatever. But then I was going to leave and like we made plans to meet up. And the night before, this is the night before I was going to leave. And he just blows me off because mm. he was like with his coworkers. And he's like, I'm coming after with like after I finish my coworkers and we're going to hang out, whatever. And he's like, I got too drunk. Like I can't come. And then just yeah. bailed on me and then never said goodbye. Wow. And I was like crushed. I like called my best friend, Maria. And I'm like, oh my God, why does he not like me? Why does this always happen? Mm. And I'm like, you know what? Like he wasn't worth the effort, obviously, because he's not putting in the effort. Mm. I was leaving the next day. There was no rescheduling. It was. Yeah, this is what it is. made plans with me. Yeah, and then you just got too drunk. Like, come on, now. I don't know. You're in your mid twenties. Hold your alcohol, I guess. Right. Like, know your limit. Yeah, and you know what? I just want to really reiterate too that it's like we all have these stories, and we're so happy to evolve out of them. Like, if this is maybe currently something that you're going through, it's like it takes the heartbreak to know better. It really does. Mm-hmm. It, really it really does. It's like you touching the stove. And they're great stories, right? Like I now have these amazing oh my God. stories that I get to come on to podcasts and talk about and yes. make me famous on TikTok because yes. I had another guy that like he got me two videos that were close to a million views because of my story with this no. man. And literally, why is it? I was like, thanks for the views. Yes. Like the like most chaotic. Literally the video that got me into TikTok in the same way as you of like, oh, wait, this is happening. This is working was a horror story for me in the UK. Like a horror story that I like alchemized into like a funny dating story, you know? Yeah. So honestly, while these things are happening, just think to yourself, like, this is a lesson. This is a viral TikTok at the very least. (laughs) And it's leading me on the path that like to Mr. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Like this guy, I met him on Tinder. We'd been speaking for maybe over a week, but we hadn't had the chance to meet yet. Mm. We were in the south of France and I was coming back that night from another city And I was texting him and I was like, oh, like I'm about to miss the last tram up to where I live. And it's like a 40 minute drive, like a 40 minute taxi, which would have been like a hundred dollars. And he was like, I have a car. Do you want me to come get you? And I had this like 20 seconds to decide, like, do I let this man come pick me up or, you know? Mm -hmm. So again, I hit up Maria. I'm like, hey, listen, this man's about to come get me at the airport. The reason I felt comfortable with it was because I had cell phone service the whole time. And we had been talking for a little while and he lives in France, but he was also like a traveler before. Like he told me he lived in New Zealand or Australia or something like that for a while. And so I think travelers help travelers out. So they're like, oh, I know what that's like to spend $100 on a taxi. Like I got you. And so I, while I was waiting for him to come get me, I just made a short TikTok of me like with my backpack being like, this man I haven't met on Tinder is coming to get me like to take me home. And then like quick clip of his car like when he pulled up because i'm not trying to like show that like i'm filming him oh my god boom a million views everyone's like had an opinion (laughs) yeah yup. oh yeah and so then someone was like um we need an update like literally just like are you in a live update (laughs) (laughs) well looking back maybe that's what they wanted but i was like oh let me update them on like where we're at now right so (laughs) He was like, I'll take you out like in a couple of days. I'm like, okay, like where are we going? He's like, I know this great sunset spot overlooking Nice. I'll take you up there. So he picks me up and he takes me up to this hiking point and we hike up to this sunset spot. And he's got an entire bag of, this is the most French thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. Mm. Red wine, French baguette, oh. goat cheese, salami, like mm. all, like a whole on charcuterie board. Like, hell yeah. A basket of blankets. This man, like, takes me up to the sunset spot. He is romancing the shit out of me. Like, okay. it was. And I had already told him, I was like, hey, listen, I have a TikTok that's getting a little bit of attention and you're in it. Um, Do you want to be in the second one? And he was like, oh, yes. So he was like playing it up for the camera like super hard. Yeah. Ooh, okay. I love this. (laughs) 
<laughs> I love it. Yeah. And again, another example of you being bold and using your voice and being like, hey, uh, would you like to be in my TikTok? Or how would you like, what is your boundary in this? You know? Yeah. So do you have any tips for folks that are looking to have the, quote, talk as their travel relationships get more serious like yours did? I think be very honest and open about what you're looking for and make sure that you know what they're looking for as well. Mm. My boyfriend and I actually briefly broke up. We were going to do long distance. And our plan was that I was going to come back to Guatemala, be here for like a month. And then we were supposed to go travel together. And that was the plan. And I think because I am so like bold and this is my vision and this is what I want, I kind of like made him see that there wasn't any other option. Like it was either you're going to come travel the world with me or we're done. And so I think it put a lot of pressure on him. Mm. And when he started realizing like, you know, he's from Guatemala, he he's not making what I'm making where mm. he's a little bit younger than I am. So we're kind of like at different, you know, points in our lives right now, which, you know, you can still make a relationship work with that, but you you have to communicate that. Mm. And so I think he started getting a little scared and was like, oh no, like, I, I can't live up to these things that I've I've told her that I wanted to do. And I was like, if we had just had those conversations, mm. then he thought breaking up was better than asking me to like come to Guatemala and like, quote unquote, settle down. Mm. And I was like, OK, well, first of all, I'm never going to settle down. Just get that, you know, out of mm. the way right now. But having a home base is not the same thing as settling down. Yeah. And so we just had to have that like a really honest conversation about like, well, you, you know, ask me, ask me these things or talk about it instead of just being like, well, this is what's right. Mm. Maybe you have no idea what the other person is going to agree to. Or, yeah. you know, I didn't, I didn't expect to move to Guatemala, but you know, here I am now. And yeah, over a year later. Remaining flexible for sure. And, you know, a yeah. takeaway for me with these sorts of things is like communication is always easier said than done. It's so funny. (laughs) It's so funny. Like, I mean, how often has it happened for me too? Like, I actually just came out of something recently where usually I'm the one that's gotten a little ahead of myself or whatever, but it was in the reverse this time. Like somebody that I had had, you know, a travel relationship with in Mexico, I think they were a little bit younger than me, not too much. Do you love Gen Z? (laughs) Don't worry. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, I just assumed we were on the same page. And what do they say about assuming, you know? And Mm -hmm. I think the big takeaway from that situation was, like you're saying, you got to be clear from the get-go. It's never too early to state, like, what your intentions are and what the other person's are. And I think I can be an avoidant, you know, like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. It's like, you got to know. You got to (laughs) know, you know? Because... If you're really playing for keeps or you want to have a higher quality fling, like it doesn't even have to be like the longest thing in the world, but a friend used the word. She was like, I just want to share quality time with people. This was someone who was Mm. not looking for something serious, but also still looking for a higher caliber and quality of interaction. Like a better connection. Yeah, exactly. And that requires communication. And when there are questions, chatting them out together, because essentially what happened was we went both our ways. And uh, this person kind of came to a lot of their own conclusions on their own instead of chatting them out. And then I was like, wait, what do you think? Huh? And they were like, well, I think that you're going to do this. And there's other guys that you're probably talking to. And I think that you're probably never going to come. And I was like, whoa, there's a lot of Uh, assuming. You got to ask me. You got to ask me. Yeah. For me, like I... I love travel and that is a number one priority in my life. But everyone around me was always like, oh, I just assumed you wanted to be single and have fun and whatever because you're traveling. But that's not always the case. Like if anyone out there is listening and they are the kind of person who wants love, but also wants to travel and solo travel, especially like you can have both. You just have to, again, state those boundaries, Mm -hmm. let people know who you are from the beginning. And I always knew that I wanted a relationship like I was like, yeah, I want to travel, but I still want love and I still deserve love. Mm -hmm. And so I always was like, okay, remain a little bit more flexible because I am a digital nomad. I do have the ability to stay an extra couple months if I want to or move to a different country and set up a home base or whatever it is. Because like those those past guys I've talked about where it didn't work out, like if it had worked out and we had this spark or connection and I was willing to stay a little bit longer or maybe come back, like I totally would have done that because I owe it to myself to try what I want to to be able to experience these things and 
I don't know. I think it's just, it worked out. It ended up working out in mm-hmm. the end. And I'm very happy with where I am now, but I just had to be unwilling to compromise on what I knew I wanted from life. Right. Beautifully said, really. And it's compromise, meeting the middle, communication. Love that for you. Love that for us. <laughs> yeah. And my boyfriend's so supportive. He's like, oh, you want to take a 10-day trip with your friend to Colombia? All right, I'll see you in 10 days. Like, Right. Yeah. He He's like, oh, no, like you were a solo traveler before you met me. Like you're still going to be a solo traveler now. Right. Again, green flags, you guys. Green flags. <laughs> <laughs> he's He's pretty chill, yeah. I love that. So while we're on the subject, I think we do have to talk about the inside story with Cassandra. Oh, so he doesn't do it anymore. Oh my gosh, if he listens to this, I'm just not going to tell him this podcast is coming out. Um, <laughs> share him segments, clips. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, just like, oh, I mentioned you in my, my podcast the other day. Just, that's all I got to tell him. So he doesn't do it anymore. But when we first started hanging out, anytime that he would get drunk, like he'd be like Cassandra, like I would turn into like his Cassandra. Oh, hell yeah. So then he's got like this uh, Mm -hmm. Guatemalan accent. And so then he'd be like, where's my Cassandra? Like it it was just very, very (laughs) spicy. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, now I had to have a talk with him and be like, "Uh, where's that at again? You know, but (laughs) just like for the first three months that we were dating, like. He would always say that to me. And I'm like, oh, okay, like now I know it's it's spicy time. Like, okay, you know, hey, <laughs> that is hot. And again, like I was saying in the beginning of this chat, like when I go abroad, I just Cassie isn't hitting. It's not. And also, <laughs> too, like our names mean something different in Spanish. Mm. People will always say like Cassie means like sometimes or no, rather like almost. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so people will just change my name. I'm like, hi, I'm Cassie. And they're like, OK. And then like give them like 20 minutes and they're like, hey, Casey. Like I became Casey. I became you, hey. you know. And so <laughs> it's just it's just one of those things where I'm like, OK. Okay, I think I just have to go for Cassandra. Yeah. And when I tell them, like, yeah, I'm Cassandra Martinez, they're like, oh, shit. Okay, she's one hey. of us. It's a whole other vibe. It's a whole other vibe. <laughs> well, I just don't respond to Cassandra. Like, if you call mm. me Cassandra, I don't – my brain just doesn't click that you're trying to talk to me. Oh. So, like, it's just – it's never been – it's only for my mom who's mad at me. Cassandra Renee. And I'm like, okay, I know I've done something bad. Ooh, yeah, that's a weird association for sure. Totally get it. <laughs> yeah. But then like if anyone who has like a Spanish accent or speaks Spanish, you know, they got like the Cassandra, like they got like the little mm-hmm. accent on it. I'm like, okay, wait, maybe I maybe I will be a Cassandra. Like, okay. Right? It's something you can try on. Honestly, like it comes and goes. Like, it, what's the vibe? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to remember that if I uh, ever become single again. So we're not manifesting this. <laughs> we're not. Absolutely not. <laughs> Hopefully I never get to try this out. <laughs> right, right. Fingers crossed. So before this convo, we were kikiing in the DMs a little bit about body neutrality and how travel has helped you achieve a more neutral and confident relationship with your body. In your words, could you please share what the term body neutrality means to you? Right. So body neutrality, body positivity, like all of that was thrown around a lot. You know, it Mm. still is. And so I was like, yeah, you have to be positive about your body. You have to think great about your body all the time. Right. And realistically, that's just never the case. And Nicole from Hugh Travels the World that you've had on your podcast, she had posted a while ago. This is this was a long time now about body neutrality. And I was like, oh, wait, that resonates with me so much more about you don't really think positively or negatively about your body. It's just that you are who you are. You exist how you exist. Mm. And that has helped me a lot with my confidence. And so has travel because I so many times like stop and think like, holy shit, my body has taken me to 27 countries. I've carried two 30 pound backpacks or however much they weigh you know, through different cities. I've hiked mountains and jungles and Thailand and swam in bodies of oceans and all over the world. Like my body is so capable and strong and does all these amazing and wonderful things for me. Like I need to be kinder about it. And I'm never going to be like, oh, I can't eat that and miss out on delicious Mm. Guatemalan food or Thai food because I'm worried about the extra few pounds that I have on my body. Oof. So well said. 
I think for me too, I can find myself in these moments where say I, it's usually in the beginning of a trip, to be honest, like I always have to be extra gentle with myself in those first few weeks as I'm just kind of re-entering society from nunhood here at home. And it comes up and like, say I'm putting on the swimsuit or whatever. And I'm like, oh, it's so critical right away. And it's like, am I really going to withhold this experience to myself? Because I don't think like my body is worthy of being in space or this or Oh my God, it's just, it can be a real mind fuck. Exactly. It really can. Yeah. And that's travel and dating while traveling even has given me like that confidence of Mm. put the bathing suit on and go do that snorkeling excursion that you wanted to do because, you know, you're not going to remember those people who were hating on you if anyone ever has. Like, I mean, they might behind your back, but like to your face, no, because you're going to remember that snorkel experience way more than you're going to remember those people hating on you. And yeah. let me tell you, I have never had a single issue being a mid-sized girl traveling dating. Mm. Like, I've never had an issue with finding men or women to date or mm. hook up with or whatever. I've never – there was um uh, from Eat, Pray, Love. I read the book and watched the movie. And mm. I remember in the movie specifically, like, uh, she was saying that they were in Italy and they were eating pizza. And her friend was like, oh, I can't eat this because – you know, you know how many calories that is and and whatever. And she was like, how many times have you taken off your clothes in front of a guy and they've told you to put them back on? And she's like, never. You know, it's like, you're not looking for that validation from the people that you're hooking up with, but it is an empowering thought to be like, this is who I am. And if you don't like it, that's not my problem. But like, they know what you look like before you get into bed Mm -hmm. with them, most likely. Like, you know. 100%. It's so much of our own shit just coming up, vomit, like bleh. You know, and they're like, I'm chill. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) And this is my first serious relationship. So Mm. even learning about that has been pretty cool and how comfortable you really get with somebody in a relationship. It's beautiful. um, After being with them for so long. Yeah. And just how comfortable you are showering in front of them or taking off your clothes or whatever it is. Like you just, you don't care as much anymore. This is the weirdest joke to make right now, but this is something that has like been on my mind. (laughs) A lot of people think that single folks be having like the craziest nights, like the wildest hookups. I'm telling you, it's the couples that are the biggest freak leaks. I'm telling you, I'm telling you because you're so comfortable (laughs) with one another. Like you said, like you get to this space. That you can do more. Yeah. You get to experiment. You like, you know, test each other's boundaries with respect and consent and depth. Like I'm telling Mm. you, there is a lot of cookies in that jar. (laughs) (laughs) Finding out stuff that you're like, oh, I didn't know that was who you were. Like, okay. like (laughs) Remaining open to that for sure, for sure. And I also love what you said about like the neutrality because it's like, this is just the vessel. It's just the vessel, you know, like we're we're here to experience so many elements of life, all the goodies, you know, and to hold ourselves back because, oh, like I used to hold myself back from making content when I would have a pimple that was just taking up all of my face. Or whatever. I'd be like, Uh, oh, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait until that one clears up. And then another one would come right when that one cleared up. And I was like, okay, well, the video's got to get made. It just has to. It has to. You just have to get it done. Yeah, I cannot hold myself back in this way anymore. It's become such a strong part of who I am now that I sometimes forget, like, people still really do, Mm -hmm. especially putting myself out there on social media. Like, I've never really struggled with that. So one time I went to Croatia last summer and did Stoke travel, like the nice. sailing Dubrovnik to split, whatever. And I'd been posting a lot of bathing suit pictures at the time. And someone who was very like well-intentioned, but kind of like, I was like, wait a second. Mm. Um, she goes, oh, how are you so confident to post pictures like this on social media? Oh, wow. At first I was like, Should, do I have a reason not to be? Mm. And I addressed this on my Instagram like publicly. I was like, do I have a reason not to be? And then I was like, wait a second. Like, no, this person is probably just looking for that confidence within themselves yeah. that they see me having with myself. Because like, I'm not like oblivious. I know I'm not a size zero, but mm. why the fuck should I have to be a size zero? Like, yeah. I'm still a valid, funny, creative, intelligent, strong, independent person at size 14. Mm, Yeah. You know, I love like you walking us through one, just the reaction. And then also like your highest self being like, no, that wasn't the intention of what they said. They just want some of that juice that I got, that confidence that I got. And how can I replicate that? 
you can't you can't be positive about yourself all the time like you're gonna look in the mirror and be like oh I don't like the way I look in this or mm. I don't want you know whatever but it's like just accepting that and being like okay well there's so many more important things to worry about than so many what I look like so yeah many. I feel like you have to reach a critical point like a critical mass of just like this cannot stand anymore there are so many other things for me to be dealing with that this doesn't worth the brain space because like I mentioned earlier in the conversation for me when I step foot out into the world after like a period of time being at home and like I'm in sweats I'm in pjs most of the time and then I go back out there and one it's a lot of energies mixing again when I've been in the hermit shell, which I do love, don't get me wrong. But getting out there is a jump back into like, oh, wow, the world again, and all the good, bad and the ugly of it. Yeah. So those first few weeks, like in the swimsuit or sweating or like dealing with like, oh, my God, anything, it's rougher. And then I just get to this point where maybe it's through an amazing travel dating experience, like you said, kind of happened for you that made you more comfortable or just momentum, you know, like you've conquered this, you've managed to not miss buses or planes or this, like you are superwoman at this point. Like what is God being so mean to myself about cellulite all about, you know, like you just, yeah. you're just like, okay, checking that out of the window. I'm going to move on to bigger and better things to focus on. Like when you're running through the Amsterdam airport on a 45 minute layover, like with two backpacks strapped mm. to you, you have no time to be thinking about what do I look like? Oh my God, I'm sweating. I'm disgusting. Like whatever. No, you're worried about the fact that you have to get through an international airport that you've like maybe never been to before, yeah. before that next plane takes off. And you're like, I don't care. Like I just, I'm here. Like I am you know? here. Yeah, 100%. I am at gate Z and I need to get to gate A. Like that's literally happened yeah. in an hour. And I was like, oh shit. Like jogging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Oh Travel stories are a whole nother thing. Like horrors of airplanes and oh, layovers and yeah. sleeping in like the benches on like in your, your gate and whatever. But that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother beast for a whole nother truly, day. Truly, truly. And it all adds up to one bigger picture, which is just like truly at the end of like your first month solo traveling and whatnot. Like you are glowing. You are a whole other being 100%. Yeah. And I think as a midsize, almost plus size person, I don't see a lot of other people like me when I'm traveling. And mm. I think that was really discouraging at first because, you know, people from Canada, Australia, the UK, whatever, a lot of European countries, they're all so little. Mm. And then, you know, I'm 29. I'm not a 19 year old little girl anymore who has 0% body fat and, mm -hmm. and whatever. So I'm not going to look like that. But like, that doesn't mean that I'm not worthy because I don't look like them. So true. And the U.S., like we have terrible health standards compared to those countries, you know? Our health system in the U.S., like... It's wild. It's just not, it's not great. Yeah. I notice it 100% with my own body too. Like I am maybe at the three, four week mark since coming back from Mexico. And I always have to be gentle with myself on the way back in because the first week I am my glowy, dewy, tan self... And then I think my body starts getting accustomed to the food back at home again. And I guarantee mm -hmm. you, I'm going to be breaking out. I'm going to be bloated. I'm not going to be sleeping well. All these sorts of things that as a person with PCOS who travels, like I leave the country and my PCOS is like, I'm a normal person again. I am in check and flow, you know, and then you come back home and like certain things start getting triggered and you're like, oh my God. Yeah, you really notice those things when you start traveling, like the quality of like European food in general, like Italian food, French mm. food, like it's just it's so like of such a better quality of food. And I yeah. think they do a way better job of teaching their kids from a young age, like how to eat healthier and, and stuff mm. where the US is convenience. What drive through can we go through to get our food? So yeah, it's it's a struggle. Yeah, it really is. And it's day by day, honey. And it is like the privilege of getting to go out and be a solo traveler, just like exit the country and get to see it that you you understand like, oh, there's something afoot here. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Just my two cents on it, you know. <laughs> so what is next for you? So I leave in about nine days to go to Colombia. Ooh. And that will be my first time in South America. And I am stoked. I am so fucking excited. Like, I my last trip was in September. And it's now March. Like, my last, like, travel trip. Oh. And so to a traveler, that's, like, an eternity. Mm. Yeah. So I just had some financial troubles and I was adjusting to life in Guatemala and it was yeah. the holidays and yada, yada, yada. So 
my friend and I were talking about doing something and we we're like, let's just book it. And within like 24 hours of our conversation, we booked the flight and Amazing. we're going to Columbia for 10 days. So yes, shout out to those friends that you plan to seed and within 24 hours, everybody be booking. They're booking it. Yeah. Yay. She's also from the US and she lives in Guatemala too. So okay. I think it's nice to surround yourself with those people who already have that little bit of adventure in mm-hmm. them that are more willing to do it. Because like, if I ask someone from back home in Ohio, they'd be like, oh, well, maybe. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get to ask this of you earlier, but like, what's your living situation now? Are you in an apartment or? So I'm living with my boyfriend. <laughs> um, we we moved in together in January of this year into a two-bedroom apartment in Panahashel, Lake Atitlan. Oh, so cute. Okay, she said yeah. bye-bye to the bunk beds and she's with Bay. <laughs> Yes, I am. (laughs) I mean, you know, I'm still going to do my like, we're staying in hostels the whole time I'm going to be in Colombia. So Mm. I, you know, I'll still get my, uh, she knows her roots, you know, dose of, (laughs) yeah, my dose of hostels. But yeah, you know, it's, it is a little bit nicer. I finally have like an actual closet of clothes with different options. And, you know, those impractical pieces that you probably wouldn't have bought when you were like backpacking. I'm like, oh, and now I have them in my closet that maybe, you know, wear when I want to feel nice for, and I don't have to lug it around with me, you know, for three months if I wear it one time. That feeling is God tier. A closet? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Can you imagine? (laughs) What is that? No, truly, truly. And lastly, how can people keep up with you? Right. So my Instagram, TikTok, you know, everywhere you can find me is Casey Meets World, Casey with a K. That's where we differ here. Yep. <laughs> and so K A S E Y Meets World and TikTok's probably where you're going to get most of the budget, the real mm. just word vomit thoughts that come out of my mind when I'm walking down the street to work or whatever it is. And then Instagram's a little bit a little bit more curated, but not much. And I'm also hosting group trips now. Hey, spill the tea. Tell us. So I'm doing one to Guatemala in April, so next month. So that one's closed. But I am now doing one to Costa Rica in September as well for a week. And it's the Caribbean coast. So we're going to Tortuguera and Puerto Viejo for Mm. one week of beach and just relax. You know, that Pura Vida life. So I'm very happy and very excited. Yeah, baby. Amazing. Well, all of Casey's socials will be linked in this episode description so you can keep up with her. But Casey, thank you so much. This was fun. A long time in the making. (laughs) I know. I was like, I I need to get on this podcast. Like, I'm so obsessed with your whole social media. So love it. Love it. And we're here, baby. Well, you have an amazing day and enjoy the lake for all of us who can't be there right now. (laughs) Oh, yes, I will definitely. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You are so welcome. To keep up with Casey and all her budget-friendly adventures and tips, follow her across social media at Casey Meets World. The link to hop onto her epic group trip to Costa Rica will also be in this episode's description. So don't miss out on your chance to hit the Caribbean with Casey. Want to link up with like-minded globe thotties from all over the world? Find your squad by joining Globe Thotters Facebook group. Our Facebook group is a private space to ask all your travel questions, swap stories, and meet up with other adventurers on your wavelength. The Facebook group is also the first to hear about any trips I've got coming up and how you can join me. So to join the squad, all you gotta do is search Globe Thotter Travel Gang on Facebook. The link is also in this episode's description. Let's wrap things up with a juicy voicemail straight off the Globe Butter hotline. This X-rated and raunchy tale takes place in Athens shortly after Greece reopened to travelers. So you just know everyone was a bit feral. Well, I think you already know who this is, but uh, you caught me at a time where I'm buzzing off wine right now, so I'm going to spill some tea. Okay, so I like to travel solo and mix solo trips with group trips. Either I'll go solo before I meet my guys or I'll stay longer in our destinations after they leave back home and I'll just do my own thing. So this time we go to Athens and it's right as soon as COVID ended really for them. So the only places they allow open for socializing and drinking are rooftop bars in Athens, Greece, right? So I'm like, okay, I've got a couple of days to spare. Let me just go out and try to see what's going on tonight. And actually playing of music is illegal in Athens as well. So there was no music anywhere being played. 
Anyways, I go to this bar, get the only seat left. It's so crowded. I sit next to these two Americans. We start chopping it up, have dinner next to each other, have some drinks. And I'm like, this is kind of whack. Like, let's go back to my crib. I got, I brought a speaker. Let's play some music. And before you know it, we're both on my couch. One of them's like a plastic surgeon. The other one's a lawyer. They're just best friends who like to travel together. And then one of them goes to the bathroom. And the other one starts kissing me. And she's like, you want to have a threesome? I'm like, all right, let's go. So as soon as the other one leaves the bathroom and come back to the couch, we just start kind of going crazy and go back to my room. And we still stay in contact together. Inspired to share your own epic travel story on the Globetrotter hotline? All you got to do is go to speakpipe.com slash Globetrotter or click the link in this episode's description to leave an up to 90 second voicemail detailing your travel tale. A quickie, if you will. Want to stay anonymous? No name is required to leave a voicemail. Till next time, I'm Cassie Martinez.